All right, all. So I've pushed on to new dungeons, and we're going to continue doing so. I was thinking about possibly going to Dakara, but um, well, the ruined dungeon is right next to where Dakara is, so why not go to maybe uh, the ruined dungeon first? And that's one of the alternative dungeons that uh, I think I could possibly do right now. So let's go do it. So in here we go. So the Ruined Dungeon is, um, it's one of those few instances that's not randomly generated. It's got these signs and they give you these clues. So the first clue here is the river flows in the best stone. And we got ourselves an Orc Master Assassin right there to try and kill me. I better be careful of him. First things first, let's just Sun Infusion him. Ooh, I got one of those Rex things over there. Um, I'll do this. Bad time for this not to be working. Uh, let's try burning these guys. Well, that lightning's hitting people at least. I think I might have hit him though. Thing is, I don't want to leave the cover of this area just at the moment. Burning them in acid, or during burning both acid and fired the uh, snake and the orc assassin, luckily. Um, let's just wait, I guess. <clears throat> Gonna start regenerating quickly. Um, I want to test how this works. So, it is an instant heal effect right there. You are almost dead, so maybe I'll try for assault. That's too much. Let's just do a simple stun bash. All right. Apparently, kill a Rexling. Wonder which one. All right. Uh, let's do blinding speed. Oh, you. He actually managed to uh, rush me, that bastard. And there's lots of stuff going on with all this acid. Corrosive Vapor, I wonder, is that a skill I have in the Venom Tree? Corrosive Mist, so there's like the, I guess the, um, what do you call it, the type of effect that the Venom Drake, that's similar to what these Rexlings are doing. Exhale Mist Lingering Acid Dealing, you know, damage, uh, uh, you know, in a radius of three. And there's a Mist get Corrosive for two turns. I'm thinking about, I'm wondering if I actually had a good idea of doing this right over here. I mean, repose it sounds good, but I barely ever block, so. Heal up a little bit. Zorn a little bit. I was also going to test this other skill I had, didn't I? I want to see how good uh, Burrow is. So it allows you to burrow in the walls for nine turns. I can't seem to be going into the wall, so. Oh, there we go. So you can turn some walls into floors if you want to. Thinking about now, these um, sand drake aspects, I kind of like them, but they're all like one hit wonders. Like one point, one point, one point, maybe some points into that one. Um, I don't mind them so much, but I'm thinking that I really don't want to, like, you know, maybe put too much in, 
I may mean, not get billing more just because you get the um, ability to sound wave that can confuse people, but more or less, one point, you know, maybe one point here, maybe one point there, one point where, one point there, some points there. If I zoom this again, maybe max this out, look into the cold drink stuff and venom drink stuff. I may make a new character. I probably won't film it, but I may make a new um, character where the point is that I'll just like, try and learn how this works. Loremaster Greynor's Analysis of the Races, Chapter 7, Orc Extinct. The orcs are, joyfully, extinct from Magial, following the purge instigated by King Tuknur the Brave at the start of Asia's ascendancy. But an academic study of their previous culture and civilization is still of interest, primitive though it may have been. Orcs were generally around 6 foot uh, 1 inch, with green or black skin. They vary greatly in physical appearance and build most likely due to their exceptionally fast breeding rates. The majority of orcs were thick built and heavily muscled, well remembered as the stock grunts of their terrible armies. However, in the Age of Pyre, a great number of thinner, stingier orcs appeared, off first in destructive magics. The orcs were first encountered by the Edelo halflings, who tried to use the simple creatures as servants, but gave up after finding them to be too violent. In, in the many centuries since wars and battles have been almost continuously fought with these brutes, their off superior numbers have at times threatened to overwhelm all civilization, even leading to such drastic, drastic defensive measures as a spell blaze. The most terrifying time, though, was during the Age of Pyre when the orcs developed arcane abilities, and under the leadership of the Garquil the Devourer, they swept through the Div continent, mercilessly slaying all before them. In the end, 10,000 halflings gave up their lives in the Battle of Nargul to defeat their demonic leader and stem their army's advance. Gradually, the civilized races began to recover, and finally, King Tokhtar and Queen Ravana succeed in uniting human and halfling kingdoms, putting together a force to push back the orcs and ultimately extinguish their them entirely. Recent investigations of or orcish ruins have revealed a surprising amount of cultural material, and even crude artworks based around fertility and battle. Some evidence have been found of strong community elements in their culture, which must focus on sporting activities and racial pride events. However, these are still clearly lacking in the subtleties and aspects of the most advanced cultures, and any attempt to compare them uh, to, um, with us must be overshadowed by their brutality, ter territorial violence, and obsession with war. There have been no sub um, substantiated reports of orcs for over 100 years. What reported signs there are tend to be from unreliable sources uh, as adventurers and hermits and have never been verified. We should be thankful that these horrible creatures have been banished uh, to the annals of history, surviving only as stories we told to misbehaving children. And of course, the orcs are not gone, but, uh, you know, hope's hope. Here's another clue. Um, there's an inscription here. The Elgish force burns all that lives. And you'll see what all these clues mean when I get to it. Kill the snow giant. Why am I uh, on the wrong thing here? Alright, so here we got a whole bunch of orbs. And here's a locked door. This door has been sealed off. You need to find a way to open it. And you do so with these um, orbs here. What is that guy? That is a demon miner. He's got... These just got a rare rank. I'm not sure what else what you can do. Let's do this and blind him. Looks like to be a fire imp. Uh, we'll hit him with tornado. Stun him. All right, I think he's stunned. Or he's just confused. Oh well. Let's get close to him. Let's hit him with this. I'll hit him with assault. You can hear a magical trigger firing off. So that means we'll do orbs lift up. Guess not. Uh, let's see here. Arcane disrupting forces. Uh, I don't really care about it. <clears throat> this though, 675% movement rate. What's my current one? 681. It's good, but not that great, so. 
Oh, it is really good. The cooldown on this is 20 versus this, which is 13. So I like to use these movement effects quite a bit. So this is a really good um, rune for me. Um, Banshee. Let's back off a moment. Banshee's dead. Banshees are, are basically spirits that can go through walls, as you can already see. Alright, we got ourselves an air element and some venom drake hatchlings. A quasit, a small heavily armed demon. As you can see from the mix of everything, there's just a huge mix of what you can expect to find in here. I need a better weapon. At one point this weapon was good, but now it's just not that great. Let's keep going. Let's get this guy. Ooh, we got ourselves multi-hued Drake Hatchlings. These guys aren't too bad, but if there's a um, an actual Drake around, an out, out one, I'm going to be in trouble. Some wolves and a snake. Luminescent Horrors. All right, so these guys, of course, as you remember, can be kind of annoying. We're gonna hit them with lightning right at the start. An anaconda! Oh, well. Um. Ow, ow, ow. Heal up a little bit. Hit you with this and stun you. He's almost dead. That's an assault on this Luminous Horror. I missed the bastard. Alright, time to do a, a shout. That actually killed the cube and hurt these guys a little bit. Regen a little bit. Heal up a little bit. Um, let's activate this stuff to protect myself from the beams that are going to be shooting at me constantly. Stun you. We'll do that. Hit you with this. That. Boom! Level up. All right. Now here's the thing. I actually could put a fourth, a uh, uh, fourth point in here just to get this up to. Um, Basically, uh, increase the duration of the Counter-Strike debuff from one to two turns. Which shouldn't be too bad, I guess. So I guess I'll do that just to make it useful, if I um, decide, you know, to block. But I'm not too happy, you know, putting that many points in there. I probably should have left this at one. Probably not investing all this stuff down here. I don't really care too much about this stuff down here, either. But since I've got, you know, some points in there, I'll make use of them for the... Sand breath and fire breath and lightning breath. Up you will start upping up my vitality some. Let's get that. I'll have this at level 24. Am I up to level 24 almost? Ah, five turns away. I'll get there eventually. Are you the guardian? Well, I'm the guardian. So this guy's a guardian. And these guardians are the guys I'm really attacking, right? So I guess kill the guardians. Um, war shout. I probably won't hurt him too much, but whatever. Let's blind him. He's confused. He's blinded, and he will die. Do this. Assault. Overpower. It's not yet dead. But he is dying. It's 
a magical trigger firing off. So I guess we have to kill these guardians and then we can push on. At this point, my um, winter type file, it's sort of hurting me for the light radius. But at least the information is the information is hurting, um, not hurting, but helping. Uh, this guy is a stone thrower, so... Ferris are highly intelligent fire elementals, rarely seen outside volcanoes. They're probably not native to this world. Um, I don't know, this is the same with the lightning damage, I guess. Ow. Ah, I'm still healing a little bit. Hit the snake. You didn't get stunned, Sally, so. Good time to do this when you know. Burn them all a little bit. Blind them a little bit. That's a good place to do a shout. I didn't match a him, but oh well. Uh, we'll make sure I don't die or anything here, so. Heal up. Kill you. You just put shielding rune on, didn't you? Damn it, shield. Damn it. But I have to go through him because he's just going to keep hitting me at range, right? So. Do this. He rushed out at me. I'm going to wait until his damage shield goes off before I hit him with, um... Anything. Okay, he didn't take any lightning damage because the shield is on. He's blocking me. So I don't want to hit him at all. Uh, heal up a little bit. Move forward. The damn shield's still on him. So, one, two, there's always a shield. Uh, let's blind him. Stun him. I didn't hit him with ear, did I? I hit him with blind, that's good enough, I guess. Assault him. Ow. Or shot him. Alright. Ding. And there we go. He's dead. He's a little bit annoying. I wonder if that axe is any good for me. Because I need a better axe. This is a two-handed battle axe, so it's no good for me, Sally. Uh, Marksman Steel Ring of Clarity. Accuracy, Dex, Mental Safe, Confusion. I think I prefer to stun, uh, to stun immunity from some freeze immunity. Now, I wonder if this is better than this one. I mean, the Skull Cleaver is cool and all, but maybe this might be better just to try out now. So, what's put on? I can't use it. This is a massive two-handed battle axe, that's why. I still need a better one-handed axe. I'm almost tempted to use the two-handed axe I've got. Maybe it'll do better than the crap that I'm currently getting with this. Alright, you're a thief. And you've got anti magic disruption on you, poor bastard. Uh, let's do this. He's too far away, I guess. We'll burn him. Uh, get rid of that. Let's do this. I want to get a little bit closer, I guess, if possible. Stun this wolf. And do a war shout. That killed a skeleton mage, so I guess I can't hit him right there. I'm thinking that this um, war shot has like you know maybe this range, this far, and then like you like go right like, here. So two. I'm not really sure. <clears throat> okay, he's cloaking, I think. And there's a tree over there I don't want to be next to because it can summon stuff. Let's 
keep backing up. Do that. I killed a forest white. Do this. Blind the bastard. Him with lightning. Shout at him. Burn him, why not? Activate this stuff, stun him. Assault him, overpower him. Okay, he's dead. Inferno Walker, what do you do? You give me a little bit of uh, fire resistances, change the damage to mine, Psych turn. It's not a bad thing, I guess, but I don't really care about it too much. Let's go kill that tree. Let's go explore the rest of this area. There's still, I think, a, one more, one or two more ruins, because there's like you know probably one or two more guardians to kill. You're still uh, using fire, so I guess you don't move. Oh, to sell fire instant move. As a Trent. What are you, the Guardian? Yes, you're the Guardian. You've got Daunting Presence and Precision, so I guess you're a Berserker. And how do I want to beat you? We'll do this right away. Hit you with this. Burn you bastards. And... Shout. Do this, hit you with that. That's just the hatchling. Skullcracker. And there's the other one dead. Now, I don't want to be surrounded by these hatchlings, so let's just back off. Kill these guys slowly. And what's left to explore? One more room. An orc. Alright, the fair flies gently in the wind, the trees roots run deep and all that. Okay, we got ourselves an ant. Icy skin, is that one of the things I can get? There's icy skin. So maybe this guy is a uh, Wormick? Let's do this. Hit him with lightning. Uh, blind him. Oh, a skeleton warrior hit me with stunning blow. I wonder if I can get rid of that. Nope. Let's do a war shout. And. He's almost dead. Get this stuff. Stun. Assault. Overpower. He just switch on me. Keep healing up. That uh, overpower, boom, got him. That should be it for the guardian. So, what's left now is just a puzzle of this dungeon, I guess. I'll show you what that's all about. So let's look at these hints. There's this hint over here. The river flows in a bed of stone. The feather flies gently in the wind. The trees root run deep. And the Eldritch forces burn all that lives. So we go up here. We got these orbs. We have to put them in a certain order. So this one's covered in dust. 
This one, a small seed seems to be growing in the orb. Flames burst out of the orb. Oops. Water, air, and magical energy. So th this one right here is probably the last one. This dust one is probably the first one. Oh. So badly touched. So wasn't that one. And here's the guys that prove it. These guys that spawn, they don't give you an experience. So there's no benefit to fighting them. Let's go down here temporarily and I'll see what this was again. So the river flows in a bed of stone. The fire flies gently in the wind. Maybe it's water that I'm supposed to hit first. So let's see that. Maybe it's water. Let's do this too. Um, so ore grows slightly. The first one's water. And probably the next one's air. Nope. Okay, now you've got to kill these guys. Uh, let's back up. These things that spawn aren't too tough, so I can make a few mistakes, right? So I know it's water. Alright, the fair flies gently in the wind, the trees roots run deep. And that's probably the last one. But feather in the wind. If it's not air, maybe it's something else. Let's see what I have. It's probably not dust. That's probably the next one. That's flames. Let's go with seeds, I guess. Nope. So we're going to be playing, ha having a little bit of fun as I try and figure out what I'm supposed to do here. No. Yes. Maybe it's this one? Alright, I guess I know what's happening here. So, that river flows full in a bed of stone. That's basically saying it's water than earth. The next one, fair, is in the wind. It's in the wind. Then we had like tree seeds and all that. And the last one. What's the last kilo? Eldritch forces burns all that live. So I'm assuming it's going to be Eldritch and then burn. So fire. So. Like that. And then this will unlock it. The orb grows brightly. There's a lot of crack coming from the northern central chamber. And we got ourselves a stone floor. Um, we'll do... What, burn him? I'm actually going to burn myself there. That's fine, I guess. Burn myself. Stun this guy. Do this. Kill all these guys. Red Jelly hits with uh, fire and nature. Line these guys. And here we are, we're in the last uh, chamber of halfling feet. I think I already uh, saw this, but some men have said that the feet of halflings can be harmed, nor, not, not by fire, blade, nor magic. And they do say that it's truly a astounding thing. And some men consider the foot of halfling to be an item of great luck and protection, and many have hung above their door or mantle. Those, those days still frowned upon to go hunt for one. So tis considered a prize heirloom to be passed from fire to sun. But women do look upon men and declare them fools. For how, say they, can the foot of a halfling be a lucky thing, when with large and un uncomely feet they were not able to wear shoes and footwear of elk and grafts and beauteous materials. And especially tis a great misfortune unto them, as with their short stature they could really do with a decently pair of heels. 
and little does Mr. White Halflings do look upon humans and say, the big folk really are very dumb. Alright, so we're in here, picking up some items. And there's always going to be this, like, rare, or, um, not rare, but unique item right here. So this is Mirror Shards. It's said to be created by a powerful mage after her home was destroyed by a mob of uh, spade blaze. <clears throat> Though he fled, his possessions were crushed, burned, and smashed. When he returned to his ruins, he found made this ammo from the remains of the shattered mirror. Alright, so, infinite dungeon, ruined dungeon. There's a description here. The deceptive god Valkur fled before the wrath of the god slayer Brenzir and his dark blade Madrif, but though he fled into the depths of the dungeon, he came to an end. Seeing himself cornered, he used his powers to delve deeper into the dungeon, laying traps and summoning enemies to confound his enemies. But Brenzir would not be lost. He was served his prey ever on, hunting him ever deeper, and Rakur fled further and faster, delving to fathoms beyond knowledge, with the god slayer all always behind him, hunting relentlessly. And so the chase continues, over centuries beyond count, Brenzir has never stopped to rest or sleep as he pursues his prey through the ravages of infinity. And though death would be a welcome reprieve, he thinks only of a hunt and vanquishing the cowardly god. Rakur continues to run, and he does not take breath that he does not gasp, and he does not take a step that is not to fight. And every beat of the traitor's heart is pounding of his terror, and he flees deeper and deeper till the end of times. This passage seems to point to the passage there, and it seems to indicate there is no possible access. You should not enter it. So, don't enter it. Alright, so option unlock new game campaign, if in dungeon to never ending descent. During the Age of Haze, the nine god slayers sent out to destroy the gods, the god Valkur, while trying to escape one of the god slayers created the infinite dungeon. He retreated there, but god slayer followed, and each time he would reach the god, Valkur would uh, create a new level. It is said the hunt continues even now, deep, very deep within the dungeon. You have unlocked the secrets of the infinite dungeon and can now create characters in the new campaign, the infinite dungeon. The invention is set in ever-increasing levels, filled with terrible foes, campaigns, features, no quests, plots, villainy creatures, or ways out. Only you against the all odds, no win condition. You will die in the dungeon, but you can prove your worth by going as deep as possible. Pure hack and slash mayhem. <clears throat> so traditional roguelike dungeon, I guess, right there. Oh, look at that, Umberhulk. All right, so there's the uh, ruined dungeon done. There's this ammo that I found. This uh, is an Arcane Forces. Um, it doesn't look all that good. And what else have I got? That's Master Two Hand Battle Axe. I don't think I got anything really worth in there, sadly. So that's probably about it. So there's the Ruined Dungeon. Given a chance, I'll probably try and find the Slaver's Compound and do uh, um, that, that one. Alright, there's Darkara. I'm going to go there sooner or later. Let's see here. Let's look around. Where is the um, other dungeon? It's not up here. There's the Golden Graveyard. These dungeons move around as you probably um, have already noticed. So, when you're looking for them, you have to look all around and all around and all around. That could be it. The Hidden Compound? Yes, that's it. So this will be the next dungeon we're going to go to. Right, I'm keeping this because it's a ring. I want to see how the uh, anti-magic disruption and all that works. I'm also thinking about possibly putting this permanently on. I don't seem to be using sleep a whole lot, you know, anymore. So maybe we'll wheel wear this and I'm not going to bother keeping this on anymore. Oops, we can't uh, get rid of the uh, other sleeping icon. But anyways, we'll just basically um, not use this Eye of the Dreaming one anymore. It was okay for a while, but it doesn't seem to be benefiting a whole lot. I don't think sleep immunity is something I really have to care about. i never even seen it used on me.
All right, so that's it for this episode. We'll see where I go with the slaves. And why not? We'll uh, just cut the recording and just come right back here.